Hi everyone and welcome to Doodling Faith. This is our bonus video in our Preferring Others series where we have partnered with Hope and Kindness in Kenya who take care of an orphanage and school in Kaseli. We have had the honour of knowing and walking with Terry and Judy for almost 10 years and are going to hear more from them today on the topic of justice. We ask that if and only if you feel that God is impressed on your heart to support them in their ministry then head over to our Just Giving page by clicking the link in the description box below. This can be done in any currency by clicking the drop down menu on the Just Giving page and all proceeds go straight to Hope and Kindness and the amazing work that they do. Today we are going to look at what justice really is, why it is required of us and how we can live a life of justice. Throughout the scriptures we find groups of people being lifted up again and again as needing particular care and being a particular focus of God's loving attention. Those are widows, orphans, immigrants and the poor. These groups have sometimes been called together the quarter of the vulnerable. Now, there are two Hebrew words for justice. The first meaning justice or righteousness. And this really is primary justice and it comes when we're in right relationship with God and one another. The second is sometimes called rectifying justice. And this means it is justice that works to right wrongs. In fact, if we're all righteous and if we were all living in right relationship with God and one another, then we wouldn't need rectifying justice because everything would be right already. Primary justice is God's hope and vision for the world. The work of justice and carrying out Jesus' commandment as a disciple to love one another are inseparable. To fulfill our purpose, we must be seeking justice and righteousness. But how can we do this? I mean, not all of us are called onto the mission field. But in Isaiah 58, which I'm journaling here, it describes that we all have places where we need to rectify harm, where we need to repair a breach or a gap, where we need to restore the streets, the places where we live. I'm sure most of us could point out places in our community or our homes or our families where people are hurting. But what will we do about it? What will we do that moves us beyond acts of mercy, which we'll look at in a few weeks' time, to really a work of justice? So let's listen to Judy speaking about Hope and Kindness's work in Kenya and how they seek justice. I want to show you what happens when you say yes to God. When you choose to believe that he is good, that he is a God of justice who cares about widows, who cares about orphans, and that he will use anyone who is simply willing to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, send me. So let me show you what God did. At the time of this photo, we had just a very expensive and very noisy generator for just two hours of electricity to give us light at night. We didn't have water. We didn't own anything. We were paying about £300 a month to rent this small compound that had six similar houses to this. We decided to use this one for our school. And for the first six years, this and a slightly smaller one were the buildings for our first classrooms. Some of you didn't even know us, and yet you still signed up to support us and to believe with us. So bless you, and I just say thank you God again for bringing you to us. At the end of 15 years, this is what God has done. He has built a whole primary school of eight classrooms with staff room that has a lot more space and a high school, a high school that has the poorest, most disadvantaged students in our area, but is now producing some of the best results for our area. And last year, we were able to build this special early years classroom. It's a great place inside and out for our youngest children to play and learn and they love it i love it it's my favorite place in the whole of kenya but it didn't happen quite as smoothly or as easily as those pictures might suggest believe me there were many times when we literally felt like we were treading water when we really could not see where the resources were going to come from for what was needed next but we chose to trust Actually, we didn't have any choice. We had to trust. The children were there. Our friends were there. But when our hopes and our wishes 
turned into critical needs, God always provided at the perfect time just to show it was him and not us. But why would God do that? Why would God call us to build a school four and a half thousand miles away from home? The reason I think is because all over the world, the poor get left behind. Sometimes they live right next door to the rich. Sometimes they get left in a small corner that still lacks even the basic needs. Caselli really is a place where all the poorest and the weakest are left behind. If you have physical strength and a sound mind, you leave. So there are many children born into homes that really struggle to provide basic care. So when we devote ourselves to God, we fast from injustice and oppression, then our light will shine. We will experience healing. God will be with us. God will hear us when we cry for help and answer, here I am. But this is only when we remove the yoke of oppression, that yoke that we place on other people, we start feeding the hungry and the afflicted, and then our light will conquer the darkness. Now that is awesome. We will be the repairers of the breach. We'll stand in the gap. We will be the ones that will restore the streets. I just think that is so amazing that God has given us the opportunity to partner with him, to build with him, to repair with him all of the brokenness of this world. Do you know what? We are the church and we are all called to do justice, no matter if you're called onto the mission field. Everywhere is a mission field. So let's pray. Lord, help me to see the places in my life where I can seek justice to release the burden I've placed on others or to help those in need around me. We pray for Terry, Judy and everyone at Hope and Kindness that their light would shine in the darkness, that, that, that through you, you would restore the streets to dwell in. Thank you, Jesus, that by your blood I'm made righteous and that nothing I can do can put me in right relationship with the Father. It's only through you. Amen. So take care guys, God bless. Don't forget you can download our free printable by signing up for our email subscriber list and wait for another update this week because we have got a surprise giveaway for our 1,000 subscribers. Guys, you're awesome. We love you all. Take care, bye.